Welcome back to the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Today we've got a slightly different formatted video because today I wanted to go back to a video that I filmed just under a year ago. It was a video about people being scammed out of their money, Mega Drive and Genesis fans specifically. At that point in time, I'd seen a number of Sega Mega Drive games go for stupid amounts of money, four, five times the price of their actual value. And I was wondering if actually there's some kind of scam going on where people are going onto eBay taking a game, selling it, but then buying it back off themselves for four or five times the price. The idea being that that forces the whole market price up for that game, and then you could sell your game or a number of those games at that new inflated price. Now, the video got a mixed reaction. On one hand, you had buyers who agreed with me. They felt that there was something nefarious going on, that people were pushing up these prices artificially to get the most out of their games to exploit collectors of the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. On the other hand, you had sellers of Sega Genesis and Mega Drive who didn't agree and felt that this was just the natural increase in price. Some of them pointed to COVID as being one of the factors that was pushing the whole market up. And so I wanted to go back almost a year later to see if actually the market had increased, had what I thought was going on worked, had what I thought was going on real, were people actually doing this, and has the market increased exponentially because of these activities. Now, like with my last video, some of this is personal opinion, but there is some fact in this one. Unlike the last one, it was more supposition looking at certain sales that look extremely fishy. Things like the EA Classics collection selling for over a thousand pounds when it actually only sells for about a hundred pounds. But this time I went and dug a little deeper and found a little bit of evidence that actually shows and perhaps proves my point. Now, if you're a retro gaming collector, you'll know that the prices have been going up steadily and certain things haven't helped. Mainstream press telling everyone that their old games are worth millions of pounds. The price of games have gone up steadily anyway, just because of market forces. But this, this thing that was happening in the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis community was something very, very different. And over the last eight months, I've definitely seen games that would have cost me £150 eight months ago, now costing me £600. And it might be that I'm just terribly bad at finding good deals for these games, but I don't think so. I really do think something's happened here. Now, I love the Sega Mega Drive. You guys that have been watching the channel for any length of time know how passionate I am about building out this collection and just owning these games, having a full physical collection, owning the peripherals, having the console behind me. I love it. It's not just nostalgia. It's a passion I have. And I haven't stopped buying for it despite prices going up. But I've definitely noticed prices going up. Ever since making that video where I used the death and return of Superman as an example of a game that went from around 350 to 400 to over a thousand pounds, I think it was something like 1200 pounds, like a threefold, fourfold increase in price, I was worried. Is this going to happen everywhere? And I think it has. I've had to limit the games I'm buying. I'll spend £100 on a game that used to only cost me 30 I've seen games that were £150 selling for 400 Games that were 300 selling for over 1000 And I, I'm pretty sure that that period of time where a number of these games were selling for stupid money, not double the price, triple, quadruple the price, I think that has irreparably damaged are collecting. But Mike, isn't this also here to say? Isn't this just your opinion? Well, I think I've got some data to help us understand and show what's been happening in our Mega Drive community. There's a company called Price Charting, uh, used a lot in the States, but they're also over here in the UK. And what they do is they track the sales of games from different sources, eBay and other places like that. And what it is, is it's used as a price guide. Now, over the last 12 months, it's not been that great for the Sega Mega Drive because the prices have been off. I'll look at a game, it says, hey, this one should cost you £15, but yet everyone's selling it for £30. Or this one should be £90, but everyone's selling it for £250. And I think that's because of this hike in the market that happened. This thing that happened sort of October, September, July, October time last year in 2021 has affected the whole market. And so their prices are off. But what they do do is they track the prices 
and they show you a graph over time of how your console has increased. And so what I'm going to show you now is a graph that I think proves what I said was happening last year did happen. What we're looking at now is a graph that shows the historical sales from around the beginning of 2017 to about 2020. So just before the pandemic. And you can see it's a pretty flat line. There's a couple of bumps in there and actually it was trending down rather than trending up over time. Then we had the pandemic. And a lot of people say that the pandemic is the thing that pushed these prices so high. I'm not completely convinced by that at all. So I looked at the data here and you can see this blue section here on the graph shows the pandemic, the period of the pandemic before I made my video. And absolutely there is an uptake. So all of those of you that said the pandemic increased the price of Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Collecting, I think you're correct. I think it definitely pushed it up by about 5-10% it looks here. Now here's where I make the video. This is after I've seen uh, a couple of sales of games, including that sale of the death and return of Superman. And then the period after this red section here is where people continue to sell games at a high price. So they were selling games that were four or five times the price, not games that are double the price, like ridiculously high. These are individual sellers selling these games on. And it's the period of time from July all the way to the end of October that I think this, I call it a scam. It may not have been a scam. It may have been some people getting lucky. But a hyperinflation of prices in a short period of time definitely, definitely happened. Now look what happens after this red line. It shoots up through the roof. And I think this is where the rest of the market looks at these prices, these sales on eBay, and realize that they could sell their games for a lot more money. If I was getting £100 for this game eight months ago, who's to say it's not worth £400 now, given the state of these, uh, these prices that I'm seeing here? And essentially what happens here is people will look at a game that uh, sells for a lot of money, and they'll judge that game against the game that they want to sell. So let's say there is uh, a game like uh, Alien Soldier, sold for around 250, 300. I bought mine in 2021 for 270 pounds. Now you see it going for 600 pounds, 700 pounds. And you go, well, if that's 700 pounds, then my game here that was worth 30 pounds, is probably worth 120 now, right? That's the market force. That's what people are prepared to pay. And what's happened is it's not what people are prepared to pay, but it's been manipulated in such a way, whether it's nefarious or whether it's a couple of sales or a single buyer that's gone in there. And it's affected the, ma the market so drastically that it's pushed everyone else up. Everyone that's selling is now si selling at a high price. And what we're seeing here, it's not a 5% increase or a 10% increase. We are seeing a 30% increase 30% increase in almost no time at all. You see this gradual build up as the price is going up. Yes, the pandemic's pushing the price up, I think. I agree with that. And then it just goes off the scale. It goes straight up. It, it averages out a bit. Then it goes up again. Then it averages out again. And it's going up again. And so I do think that that issue that I brought up last year whether it's, it is something nefarious, whether it's an organization or a group of people that have set out to push the price of Mega Drive games up, or whether it was one or two sellers that got lucky and there's a buyer out there that bought these games at six, seven times the price. We have seen some kind of accidental or purposeful market manipulation. And it's destroying collecting. <laughs> Or at least for me, it's destroying collecting. To see a 30, to see that number, to see that graph so high, it, it's starting to push my ability to, to passionately collect for these games out of my reach. Now, I'm, I, I've got a very decent job. Uh, I also have a great collection that I sell to help fund these games. But even with those two things, I'm getting to a point where some games are just so costly, it's going to take me a long time to buy these. And what doesn't help is the current world state. If any of you are adults, which my metrics show most of you are, you'll know that the price of everything is going up. And one of the biggest prices going up is fuel. 
gas and electricity. I'm looking at a bill that's almost like the Sega Mega Drive graph here. It's going up 20 times, 30 times of what I used to pay. Uh, it's, it's exorbitant. I have to pay so much now that I cannot focus on the thing that I'm passionate about. I just have to focus on heating and cooking food and paying for those bills. The prices of everything have gone up. And so being able to pay for these games at stupid prices is becoming unfeasible. And I suspect it's going to be the same for everyone else. So will these prices go up? Will they continue to go up? Potentially. Will people have the money to buy it? I doubt it. That's got to be a shrinking market. Now, what happens next? Does that market shrink? Do we see prices go back down again? My fear is that we don't. My fear is what happens is people and, you know, we're all gamers here. We're all quite stubborn. We've all heard the I know what I've got excuse whenever you go on eBay or Facebook. I fear that people will just not sell that until it sells. And so the price may not go up. It may just stagnate but stagnate at a, at a hyperinflated price rather than what should be the price of these games if this hyperinflation hadn't happened. If these ridiculous sales... I mean, you can't tell me that buying the full Sega Mega Drive Classics EA collection for a thousand pounds, over a thousand pounds, is not someone, someone manipulating the market You'd have to be ridiculously stupid to buy those games at that price. Ten times the cost. Ten times. No one buys at ten times. And whoever has done that has ruined and destroyed collecting for us. Destroyed it. I'm, I'm frustrated by it. I'm frustrated that someone's taken a passion and and monetized it in such a way or has taken a, a, a passion and acted irresponsibly right if you're if you're minted if you've got tons of cash and you go out there and you push all the prices up to satisfy yourself you've destroyed it for so many people right most of us are just average joes we're not millionaires we do this because we're passionate about it. We want to play the games. We love seeing them on the shelves, browsing through the manuals. We're not buying them to invest. We're not buying them to hold them in some private collection that no one wants to see. We want to share them with our friends, share them with others. Some people collect them and then sell them on to other collectors. But those people that have gone out there and, and have done this, whether it was intentional, uh, whether it was no intention at all, have have done something to this community that I think is irreparable. I don't think we will recover from this. I don't think these prices will go down. I think if you bought uh, Pirates of Dark Water like I did in June 2021 for 600, thinking this is it, I bought the most expensive Mega Drive game. If you bought that then and saw now that people are trying to sell it and selling it, for 1200 eight months on, 1200 double the price, you, you can't help but feel um, deflated. You can't help but feel like something's happened here that means that I have now been priced out of something that I enjoy. Anyway, I very rarely make these kind of videos, but I just wanted to highlight and go back to a video that you know, I got a lot of stick for and I got a lot of support for, but I wanted to go back and come back here with real data, real data that showed that what I thought was happening potentially did happen. Seeing that spike, seeing it jump so high, I don't see how it can't be some kind of market manipulation. It's just impossible for prices to go that rapidly up. That's, that's within a month nearly 30% within one month. It's just, it's unlikely. Let's say that. It's unlikely to happen. Anyway, that's that's my rant over. That's uh, me uh, just coming back again, like I said, to this video and, and, and giving you some actual real proof points to what I think has happened 
to this community and what's happened to Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Collection. Next week, we'll be back, though. Uh, I am going to look at the Mega Drive Mini 2. I've held off from making videos on it. I thought people would get bored of it, but a lot of you have asked for my opinion on it, a uh, breakdown on it. So we'll come back and we'll have a look at the Mega Drive Mini and we'll have a much more positive, uplifting show for you next week. So until the next time we meet, I will see you all later. <laughs>